Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Maria Martin, and we welcome you to our fourth at-home concert, Travel the World. We have four works tonight. Uh, we're going to start off in Paris, France. We are then going to New Zealand, where we have to quarantine for two weeks. Uh, we are then going to Los Angeles, and we finish our concert in London. Our first work um, is a trio by Philippe Gobert. Uh, Gobert was a prodigy flute player. He entered the Paris Conservatoire when he was 14 years old. He became uh, the professor of flute uh, when he was 30 years old. Um, at this stage, he was doing a lot of conducting and composing. And for all of us who are flutists, of course, uh, we are very, very appreciative because all these works for flute were written by Philippe Gobert. Uh, this piece is a trio for flute, piano, and cello, and it gives the flute a really a, an opportunity to shine as a violin would in this form, a piano trio. Um, this piece, though, is quite beautiful. It's very French. It has the silvery, transparent quality uh, that the French works of this period have, as, as well as this really robust big sound. I'm joined on this piece with Gilles von Sattel and Paul Watkins on the cello. And of course, they were very good sports because I'm always finding pieces maybe written by a flutist and of course they don't know this piece at all. By the end of the rehearsal period and the concert they were great converts and also loved this piece. But before we listen, let's uh, talk a little bit with Shil. Shil, how are you? Hi Mario, it's great to see you. Uh, I'm doing all right. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, not being able to see beyond the next three or four weeks is uh, is a state of mind, but we're we're doing all right. Well, how about the next six months? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's getting to the point um, where certain things are starting to look like they might happen again. I have some work in Europe. Um, in September, that looks like it might happen with appropriate measures. Uh, definitely, you know, the immediate summer has been just a, a, an onslaught of cancellations and obliterated. I yeah, mean, absolutely. You know, it, it's almost like there was a period where that was like an avalanche almost. Yeah. And uh, and I think now, you know, the new reality is to start thinking long term about, you know, how things might be able to pick up and right. what form they would take and, and uh, you know, and also what's actually viable and what is the real uh, representation of the art form that we what, that we love, right? And, and that our audiences are so committed to and that you've right. done so much for. And so all those questions start to swirl around. There's many, like I, I reread a little bit of, you know, the, the book, the book list for the epidemic and in Camus, uh, work, you know, you have a lot of talk about the different stages. There's like a long lull in the middle where it's like the new reality is just days just sluggishly go by and it's a little bit like that right now. But what we can do is look back at, uh, for example, uh, this Gobert trio that we mm -hmm. recorded last year from a concert and I look back at that and I think that the smiles on our faces First of all, this is such a gorgeous little piece. Um, I'd played it before, but you and Paul Watkins had not played it before. We love discovering new music and this piece, you know, I, I love French music. And of course oh. they have this great tradition with wind music. And uh, the piece is just so lush and so rich. And I just loved also the very first movement you know, the piano and cello writing mm. is just so fun. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, it's just all over the place and very rich. And so I, I remember we were, we were really smiling when we were discovering this piece because it's also just like, it's very little heroic and like it's got, <laughs> it's very appealing, wonderful. you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was such a pleasure. And uh, I, I loved hearing this piece again and I loved uh, seeing our performance. You know, I, I also speaking about this piece, there's something that happens with pieces that I've played at your festival where there's a certain, I don't know, it's funny. It's really, it's something that happens where they take on a little bit of a character of the sea. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, that's happened with certain pieces that I played for the first time at your festival or learned there. And it's just because we're, you know, we're so close to it. And that's another thing that in a virtual festival, you're never going to yeah. be able to capture, but your audience will remember, you know, and there's, there, there's that feeling of being out there on Long Island of, of the sea being everywhere around us. And it just kind of, and especially that piece, you know, the very opening, you imagine swinging a window open and just seeing yeah. the ocean and, yeah. you know, um, yeah, it's, no, you're absolutely right. Thank you for saying that. It's, um, it makes us uh, feel for what we're missing, but what we know will be extra sweet when it comes That's back right. to us. That's right. Yeah. Meanwhile, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to play with you again in the flesh. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. I hope... Uh, you know, we cross our fingers and just keep mm -hmm. an eye on the news. So, yeah. No. Lots of love. Okay. Thank you, Mario. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. All bye. the best.
We now travel to Wellington, New Zealand, uh, where we uh, will hear a piece by a New Zealander called Victoria Kelly. This piece was composed in 2017, and at the time I was researching uh, female composers for the season that we really wanted to highlight uh, women composers. So I first of all heard this very beautiful short piece, it's just five minutes. And then I read the story about it, which warmed my heart because it was something that I could have written myself uh, growing up in New Zealand. Um, we had only one TV station when I was younger and uh, at 10 o'clock at night, it closed down. But instead of just closing down, it would have a beautiful piece of music on it and it would say, good night, ladies and gentlemen. And when I was old enough to actually stay up for that, it was quite a, a treat. We used to just sit there and listen to the music and uh, hear the announcer say good night to us. So unbeknownst to me, Victoria Kelly also remembers this. She's a little younger than I am, but and by this stage, New Zealanders were calling themselves Kiwis. So her version is Good Night Kiwi, and she would stay up. Now we've still only got one channel, but it was up till midnight. And she would stay up and watch Good Night Kiwi. So this piece of hers, it's a five minute work for solo piano played tonight by Juho Poinanen. And it is her rendition of that wonderful time at the end of the day when the TV stops and we all go to sleep.
we're back. We are now traveling from Wellington, New Zealand to Los Angeles to hear a trio by Rena Esmail. Rena is, was born in America of Indian parents and at a certain stage in her life she really wanted to know about her background and she started uh, experimenting with Indian and Western sounds incorporating both into her music. Um, this trio, it's in one movement, um, was composed in 2017 and I did have a chat with Rena so I'm going to let her tell you all about it. Rena is joining us today from California. Uh, this work is very beautiful and you will hear how Rena has sort of blended the worlds of Western music and Indian music. Love you to tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is a really special work in my output. I mean, I work between the worlds of Indian and Western classical music. So I'm always kind of drawing from both places. And in this case, I mean, there's the piano trio, which to me is really an iconic um, chamber music ensemble. You know, I grew up as a pianist and I grew up, you know, always wanting to be a part of that chamber music kind of music making. And so um, I, I found that the piano trio just allowed me to express everything I wanted to express back as a pianist and so for so many years I had said I really really want to write a piano trio and so um, yeah this piece kind of feels like it's um, on one hand a very Western classical uh, ensemble and on the other hand it's in um, Indian ragas so and uses this rag called Hamsadvani, which is a very warm, very inviting um, rag. And sas, the, the word sas means breath in Hindi. So it's about kind of taking in this one breath and kind of inhaling in this, this, this beautiful, um, I guess, this, this um, environment. It's, it's funny because it really does sound like the music is just spinning this invisible web. And yet um, it's it's very strict and in order for the musicians to be together, they really, I mean, it's, it's far from improvisatory, which is what it sounds. Yeah, well, I mean, it's really interesting because the piece itself has a, a beautiful kind of story that goes along with it, which was that um, I was writing a clarinet concerto at the time, and it was a piece for Shankar Tucker, who is um, a, a classical Indian Western crossover clarinetist. So it was with him in the Albany Symphony. And so he's someone who, you know, went to conservatory, can read music, but then also is trained in the Indian classical tradition. So in a way, he's like my, my dream performer. And so... At that time when I was writing that piece, um, right after I was going to Albany for the premiere, I was going to go to France for the wedding of one of my very, very close friends. And, you know, I always loved that romantic story of the, the Franck uh, violin sonata, where Franck wrote it for Isai and his wife for, for their wedding. And I thought, gosh, you know, I'm a composer. I want to do something like that. <laughs> and so as I was working on this clarinet concerto, I realized that it actually would also work as a piano trio. But, you know, for the performance, what's difficult about kind of um, blending things together is because it initially was an orchestra piece. Right. So um, that kind of gives it this breath that maybe um, it wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. But so, I mean, it's so funny because this was in, this was in 2017. Um, and since then, you know, I gave it to uh, my friend, Susanna Bartal, who's an amazing pianist for her wedding. And it was randomly also premiered on the same day, but in Los Angeles, where I'm from. There just happened to be a premiere on the day of her wedding. And then, you know, years later, um, this past February, she actually came to the U.S. and performed it for the first time in the U.S. Um, and she performed it with a violinist who the next day became my husband oh. so um this piece has been you know it's involved amazing. in both of our, our weddings um so it, it just it's very personal and it's something that, that i i it brings a lot of joy to both of us well you've explained it perfectly and i'm sure the audience will hear everything that you've talked about but rena you were uh born in america but yeah. then you went back to india to study or to learn about your roots or 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I was raised in America. I was actually I grew up in Los Angeles, um, but of course, I'm the child of um, immigrants from India, and so um, I was always aware that that my my musical culture, this classical music world that I grew up in, was really different than the world that my parents grew up in. So you know, it took me many years, but I finally went back on a Fulbright um, in 2011, 2012, and I spent an entire year in India studying. Indian classical music in its culture and in its cultural context. And so um, now I'm about a decade into this practice between these, these two kinds of music. Mm -hmm. And for me, I mean, it's, it's very clear why I'm doing it because I'm just uniting these different parts of myself into a single musical language. Mm, that's wonderful. You know, these, uh, in this new COVID area, uh, and here we are doing uh, virtual concerts and interviews, it's so wonderful to have your words uh, spoken right before our audience hears your piece because it adds so much to uh, the sounds that they are shortly about to hear. It's, it's um, I, I wish we could, once we all get together and play together live again, it would be great to keep this going in some way, shape or form. Absolutely. Well, it's also, it's interesting because in some ways we're grounded and we're not able to go and be with people right now. But in other ways, I sometimes feel that I'm able to um, be with more people that, you know, I'm only one person. I can only be in one place at so many times. But, you know, through the magic of Zoom and through the magic of the internet, we're actually able to get to know people across the world that we might not have been able to spend that much time with before. So mm -hmm. I do hope to see um, all of you at a future festival, but for now, it's really great to see you uh, here. Well, it's great to see you. And uh, once again, uh, your piece is absolutely exquisite and I'm sure everyone will love it. Thank you so much. Great to talk. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
So now we travel not only back in time, but we travel across the ocean to London. At this stage, uh, Haydn, who was an Austrian composer, was on a trip to London where he composed his last 12 symphonies. Now, 
Haydn was known as the father of the symphony and of the string quartet. He was known as Papa Haydn, and that is because he wrote 104 symphonies and 68 string quartets. These London symphonies are the last 12 he wrote. On this trip with him was his publisher, Peter Solomon, and Peter thought, these are good, these symphonies. How about if we arrange them so that more people can hear them? Haydn was completely agreeable to this idea and Peter Solomon did arrange the last 12 symphonies for a string quartet, flute and piano. It's a very different type of experience. Uh, the music is all the same. We don't have the big sound that you would have with 56 players, but you do have the lightning speed uh, ability to change and be very nimble on your feet when playing with six people and without a conductor. So we found this a really interesting experience to try to create the big sound when we needed it and to really be very transparent and make the most of the fact that this was an arrangement. Joining me on this performance is Paul Wang and Kristen Lee, violins, Cindy Wu, viola, Jakob Karanyi, cello, and Orion Weiss, piano.
for joining us and we look forward to seeing you same time same place next Sunday for our Boccherini Mendelssohn program. Stay well, good night. Thank you.